Dylan. Hey, Matt. I don't know if you nailed that accent, but we'll go with it. Um, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so, Thumbs up. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. you've told me this is your very first experience with Bluey. Is that correct? I've never. So, so. Because Bluey's aware. like a phenomenon, as I'm sure yeah, 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 you're yeah. very well aware. I am aware yeah. of Bluey, and I have heard from both children and adults how good Bluey is, and I just never found myself watching it. I never actively... I, I had always said, I need to check this show out. Yeah. Like, I'm, this is going to be up there with Star Wars for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which I, after this nine-minute episode, I think I have a lot of questions for you. Yeah. So I'll tell you how I discovered Bluey. I'll start there. Yeah. Bluey yeah. was a pandemic discovery. You know, during the pandemic, we had, like, our small little group of friends that we would trust after, like, the first month or two of of lockdown alone in our home. We'd be like, all right, here's our little bubble of people that we trust. So the bubble of people I trusted were my friends George and Lauren and their kids. Yeah. And they had discovered Bluey. So I would, like... Pretty much every Saturday, I would go to their house. That was the only time I left my home was Saturdays to hang out with George and Lauren and their kids. It was just Bluey on the TV all the time. And eventually, it got to this point where, similarly to to Christmas, uh, to Christmas, a Christmas story, where I was like, I feel like I've seen this movie, but not in the actual order that it's assembled. I've just seen it in bits and pieces on television over the years. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and fucking watch Bluey. They're eight minute episodes. Yeah. And like, I got nothing better to do. So I would just have Bluey on while I was like working from home. Actually, I finished Bluey at the last Creature Feature weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like, Kyle showed up to our hotel room and I was just laying in bed watching Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> he's like all right so like this might be the creepiest shit you've ever said <laughs> <laughs> so my my one of the one of the other geekscape podcasters uh shane o'hare yes. of dynamic resolution um he texted uh the geekscape group chat the other day and just said bluey is just bronies for adults yeah which like i get what he's saying but n- I'd also say no, because I feel like there's not a the thing that's the difference to me is like, I feel like bronies and don't get me wrong. I actually really like My Little Pony. Am I going to go and dress like Rainbow Dash at a convention? Fuck Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's (laughs) the difference. It's like, I think both shows have a lot of similarities with some of their drier humor, uh, some of the dialogue and stuff like that. But like bronies... The problem with there's an element of brony that's like I want to fuck that horse. Yeah, which exactly. Like. That's like, and that's the thing is like the way it started off was I, I want to say it was a very like ironic like yeah I'm into My Little Pony and I'm a 30 year old dude. It's fucking yeah. it fucking rules. And then people started making fun of those people, and then they split into two paths. And one of the paths was I'm just gonna keep watching this and not give a fuck what people say. And the other path was. I'm going to turn into one of these fucking horses. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm going to start dressing like it. I'm going to try to have sex with one of them. Yeah. Like, I'm becoming these ponies. Where, like, and that's where Brony went. That's where Brony went. I that think. Direction. So, so I'll tell you this much. With yeah. Bluey, like, yeah. the thing that, that, made me kind of get invested in Bluey was twofold. Full, okay. First off, kind of being like during that year and a half the only uncle that these kids got to see i was very inspired by the character of dad and i hear like a lot of people who are parents say the same thing like the dad on bluey is like ultimate parent goals like this this dad that can be stern and can lay down the law but is like there to nurture their creative spirit and like let them have fun and and stuff like that. So like yeah. there was that aspect, but then there are episodes that like legitimately bring me to tears on the same level as like Jurassic Bark on Futurama. Like there's an episode that springs to mind where um they're on a camping trip and Bluey goes down to the to the lake like to the creek to get water. And he meets a dog that only speaks in French and they never give us subtitles. The dog speaks in French and Bluey can't understand the dog, but they become friends and they have a great day. 
And then at the end of it, Bluey runs down to the creek, but the the French family has already left because he can't understand French. He didn't understand that the dog was saying goodbye at the end of their play date. Oh and my like, god. And stop. it's like this like it's like stuff like that where you're like that's so fucking beautiful. Like it's so and even this episode god. there was I I wouldn't say I cried but like towards the end of this episode where their baby cousin socks is just like curled up crying in the middle of a Christmas decoration like I felt like a little bit of my my heart be like oh my god. <laughs> Like, when the parents were actually like, you bit Bluey, go sleep outside with the yeah, lawn ornaments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, have you, because I know that that flat, like that like unlocks a part of my brain yeah. where it's like when you're a kid and you're a dick to your younger cousin and you don't think about it. And then you see yeah. that younger cousin crying and you realize like, fuck, I did this. Like, yeah. like I think it captures that beautifully. Um, but yeah, this episode, this wouldn't be my favorite episode, but it's the only Christmas episode. So I figured, hey, it's eight minutes long. It's light and fluffy and we can talk bluey. <laughs> There's a season two episode called Christmas Swim. Ooh, maybe I missed that yeah. one. I'll, I'll Yeah. So because that's why I asked. That's when I, yeah. I texted you and was like, what is the Christmas episode? So there's like there's there might be another one. We might be able we to might- get knocked get another bluey episode in here get another we like bluey this. episode and by that time you'll have watched the whole series i'm sure so. exactly <laughs> i mean they are and it's wild uh what you're getting into because all of these episodes are nine minutes they're yeah. not like even a lot of the cartoon network stuff that got big like adventure time and, and regular show were at least 15 minutes these are very bite-sized tidbits episodes that can reach down and and tug at your heartstrings but let's run through this episode because i definitely have like some comments like a little bit of a commentary as you go through yeah uh the episode so go ahead it is mind-blowing and heartbreaking how many original scripts are written every year but are never made so we seek out these scripts and bring them to life with full audio production and professional actors. Check us out at Undiscovered Scripts. Movies made of paper. Wherever you get your podcasts. Free! So the episode starts off. They're getting ready for Christmas time. You know, it's typical kid stuff. They're afraid to not get presents from Santa Claus. So yeah. they decide that they're going to play. And I already have forgotten how to pronounce this fucking word. Veranda. Uh, veranda. Veranda Santa. Veranda They're going to play Veranda Which, Santa because they don't have a dude. chimney. So Santa has to come in through the veranda is the only explanation. <laughs> he comes in through the veranda. That yeah. shit killed me. And especially when, when they're like, let's go play. And the one kid just, and it's definitely suggested, just jumps on top of the uncle's junk. On because the uncle's you junk. Can... And then they quickly go, Muffin, you have to say sorry. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, and he's like, it's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm I'm, I'm a Bluey fan. This yeah. Is great. So then the game of Veranda Santa <laughs> is that you fall asleep, and then someone who's yeah. playing Veranda Santa has to sneak in, and you can't be peeking, or you won't get a present. And he slips a present behind your pillow. Seems yep. like a delightful game. And I love how like cheesy the the things are. It's just like, hey, it's a snow globe. It's like it's a pencil game. Yeah. Like, it's just like random. <laughs> the one shit game in the, the middle is like. I God, shaving cream! Yeah. <laughs> like he's so excited, dude. Uh, that's Bingo. That's the younger sister. And okay, at one point, Bingo. I think it's towards the very end. It's just like I got whatever this is. <laughs> like it's like a fidget spinner. <laughs> yeah. Like it's so. so are good. all these kids? All, all these kids are part of the same immediate family. So yeah. So the normal show, as you learn okay. from the very catchy theme song where they just yell the characters' names, is there's mom, dad, Bluey, and Bingo. Occasionally, their uncle will show up where there's Muffin and Socks are okay. the are the puppies the cousins. of the, yeah their cousins. Can um, I say I thought the first time I saw Socks, I almost texted you, and I was like, "Are they keeping this one kid like <laughs> a dog? Like is this like a Mickey Goofy Pluto yeah. situation?" <laughs> Like we, why is this? Why is socks wearing a collar? So the dad <laughs> does Veranda Santa first, yes. and he gives Bluey Bingo's pencil case, which mm-hmm. Bingo immediately is like, "Hey, that's my pencil case," and like takes it out of his hands, and Bluey's like, "Dad, Bingo snatched it from me," and the dad has this great 
quick delivery where he goes, bingo. No snatching. Okay, thanks. <laughs> like, it's like, like, it's just like, it's that parenting thing where you're like, all right, I've dealt with this argument yep. a million times. Like, just come on, let's get moving. Yeah. But <laughs> it's Bluey, also, it, I, there's something about like the way, and I, I, I want to sound as well as I can sound. There's something about the way that like the Australian accent delivers like just like quick snappy lines that set that bought this show in for me yeah uh s- bought smiling friends in for me like yeah, that well, i think like snappy i don't know what it is i think that it. accent also helps with kind of the cheesier cutesy lines like yeah like there's something that works because bluey refuses to accept bingo sorry and then Bing- <laughs> bingo says santa likes children who accept sorries <laughs> and like <laughs> And, like, that line is so cheesy and dumb, but, like, in an Australian accent, it makes me chuckle for whatever oh, reason. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> like, it's so good. Um, so then Bluey decides to be Veranda Santa. He gives out the gifts, and then as he's walking away, he just says very loud, or she, I, I keep misgendering Bluey. Bluey is a girl. Yes. As Bluey is walking away, she goes, if I were a real Santa, I would certainly give me a lot of presents. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like they're nailing that kid. Yeah. Like they're nailing how children are. Like, is that the point where the dad goes, I don't think that's how it works? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm just I, I'm just realizing now that Veranda Santa, like Veranda is just a deck. So yeah. like deck Santa. Yeah, just Santa. deck Santa. It's the same as playing deck hockey. Yeah. And then Sox wants to get into the game. So Sox shows up. But Socks, because and it's this a little... is when I was horrified. Yeah, this is, Sox, Socks is a, is a little bitty baby and bites Bluey, and Bluey gets into an argument with Socks. And this is, again, the dad's just like, Socks, listen, we don't bite people. <laughs> like, I know. Like, I think he, he also gave a thanks at the end of that one, too. Yeah, it's like, it's it's so funny, but then Bluey's being a real jerk about everything. Yeah. So Bluey's like, I want to be Veranda Santa now, and then purposely doesn't give He's Socks so, a toy. She is so... <laughs> Like, he's like, who's going to play Miranda Santa next? And she's like, I'll do it. Is that, when, then fucking- is that when he goes, strap in, kids? <laughs> like, yeah. he, like the, yeah. the dad just That's immediately the dad knows. Knew. He's, he's like, something bad's about to go down here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Bluey doesn't give a present to Socks and yeah. goes like, that'll teach you to bite people. And she's like a real kind of jerk about it. Yeah. But the part that kills me is that this is this is where Bingo gets the fidget spinner. There's this super awkward moment where Sox runs off crying. The dad yells at Bluey, and then it just pans over and Bingo just spins the fidget spinner and is like, <laughs> Wee! <laughs> like, <laughs> which again, if you've ever hung out with two siblings and yeah. one sibling is getting yelled at, the other sibling is just in its own, their own fucking world. <laughs> they and like be so this- unaffected by it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, like, things like that almost remind me of some humor you would see, like, out of Trey Parker and Matt Stone yes. in South Park. Like, like where something absurd or something is happening over here, and then you just pan to this other character doing something completely monotonous but super excited by it. Yeah. And it's fantastic. But this is the moment where, like, when they go out and see socks, I'm like, oh, my God, they made him go outside and sleep with the lawn ornaments. <laughs> Curse this girl. <gruel. laughs> Damn you, Santa. <laughs> but, yeah, Bluey goes and apologizes, and it's, I think what is charming to me about the show yeah. is like even in these moments the apologies still feel very authentic to like yeah. how a kid apologizes mm-hmm. like it's not like a like and here's the lessons we've learned today it's just kind of like bluey explains it all it's like well i got really upset because you bit me like like there's still like that little bit of like feeling like i was wronged like yeah. it's not like and that's but that's like real life, especially with kids. Like yep. so I, I I feel like that's why this became the phenomenon that it did was that 
whoever made this show, you know that similarly to like when you watch old episodes of Mr. Rogers and you're like, this guy was so gifted at knowing the language to use while talking to a small child and like having that like one-on-one conversation. Like, you know that the people who created Bluey have that same understanding that like sometimes felt lost in translation watching something like a tale of tubbies or a Barney as a kid, or even like a lot of the newer, like, like the Mickey mouse club 3d animation shows that I'll see. Like, like they're fine and they do their job and maybe they teach kids how to count and stuff like that. But like, I feel like bluey is capturing that same vibe that made adults still love Mr. Rogers and Sesame street where it's like, there's something here that's like watching it's watching something really special take place where it's like, this is an adult who knows the language of a child and knows like how it's authentic. Yeah. It's it's very authentic. So I'm glad that we finally covered Bluey. My friends, Lauren and Chrissy have been asking when we would get to a Bluey episode. So this one's for you too. I (laughs) absolutely loved it. Uh, Thanks for pushing that along because I don't know if I'd ever have had found myself in a spot where I'm like, I'm going to sit down and watch Bluey. Yeah. Um, just because, like, dude, you know me. Like, my backlog continues to grow. Well, and that's I the other thing. They might be nine minute episodes, but there's fifty two of them per season. Yeah, per season. <laughs> so, like, I don't. <laughs> Lord, oh shit, that's a lot. I, I might know. just tell you, hey, here's like ten episodes you should check. Yeah, out. do like... that. Give me like a list of stuff because they're not all winners. I I like yeah. it fine, but it's like whenever, whenever, like my nieces or nephews is like, Ooh, put on bluey. Like I have like five or six go to's where I'm like, all right, we're going to put on this one. Cause yeah, cause I, I want to be entertained too. <laughs> I just feel, I feel so overwhelmed at this point with the amount of content out there. Like, I Teddy. feel like I keep almost getting caught up, and then it's like, oh, cool, Yellow Jackets yeah. is back. That's exactly what I was yeah. about to bring up. Like at the moment we're recording this, the the newest season premiered, and even Teddy asked me last night. She's like, "Do you want to like? Do you want to watch it?" Because she really wants to watch it. And I looked at her, and I'm like, "I do eventually." Yeah. Like I I don't right at the least second. But, this but then where... I told her I was like, "If you want to watch it." Like, feel free. Like, yeah. don't feel like you need to wait for this me. Is, this is where Lord. I am such a strong supporter in the the weekly episode drop model, though. Yeah. Because that does make it easier. It's easier for me to stay on top of Yellow Jackets and eventually Succession. And Well, by the time this is out, Succession has started. But, like, Yellow Jackets, Succession, like, Mandalorian. Like, at least I only have to put aside three hours to enjoy all all three of those shows yeah as opposed to like oh great 10 of these episodes all dropped on the same day and if i want to be in the discord of all these shows without anything getting spoiled i guess i gotta like not make plans the whole weekend and just sit in my house like a fucking lazy lump and enjoy (laughs) enjoy nothing like forced watching to make you enjoy a thing that's the thing man is i feel like i'm just forcing myself through everything that's out there even no. stuff i like well, and, and that's why it like sucks. when you discover like this this at the time that we're recording this i just watched the first season of happy endings for the first time yeah and like just because it wasn't something that i was forced to watch for anything it was i had heard a lot of good things i decided to put on i had so like watching those 13 episodes i watched all 13 episodes in like a day and a half it was yeah. such a breeze. Like I was like, I don't even want to edit right now. I want to put down all of my work and just enjoy this show because it's so exactly what I need right now. Yeah. And like that type of stuff is like unfortunately becoming like too far. Like it's like it's rare to to stumble into those. It's it's a lot of like finding old shows that you missed out on that no one's talking about yeah. anymore because everything else kind of feels like pop culture homework like oh man if i don't if i don't watch the new episode of mandalorian by like thursday some big plot twist is going to be ruined for me and then i'm not the the jar jar binks has been all over the damn internet right now and it's 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 and and i'm not caught up on mandalorian i don't even remember what happened and i love star wars yeah love star wars but there's just so much of everything and i think that's why teddy and i loved so much of like just grabbing an old show and and watching it all the way through that like we do it we did it with always sunny we got all the yeah. way through that i'm telling and, you man i i mean i'm not done it but three seasons of happy endings 50 episodes yeah. 20 minutes a piece like i 
have been having a blast. It's yeah. it's it gives me serious like friends and how I met your mother vibes, but like without okay. but without a laugh track and with an actual diverse cast. Like okay. it's, it's yeah, a, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, there, there's a black and gay guy on this one. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you can have both. Yeah. Like, that's weird. Dylan, will you be my veranda Santa? Oh, I would love to be your deck Santa. Whoa. Oh, whoa. listening to the Geekscape Network.